The story begins with one sunny and ordinary day. A dark-haired boy slowly stretched, admiring the beauty of nature. From behind, a girl with ears ran up to him and calling him brother offered to take a look. It was a tribe of divine beasts called Luna. The girl managed to catch some delicious looking food for them. A guy stroked the girl's head and praised her for such a great catch. Another guy with a bandage on his forehead apologized for being late. He noticed that Luna had managed to catch a big prey, and they could have a feast tonight. It was the Aluga tribe of divine beasts. The hero noticed that the Aluga also had a great catch. From the sky, someone called out to the master. Landing almost on top of the hero, the dragon told him that it had managed to catch one as well. She managed to find a tribe of mountain birds and caught all of them. The dragon turned into a girl with horns and asked the hero, isn't she cool? It was the ancient dragon Teltu. It's all Piamali guys, but can we eat it all? The hero noticed that the girl Rihanna made a good point. Rihanna was an archmage that she asked to wait for the heroes for a minute while she prepared the food. The guy looked at the guys and smiled. Beastman, dragon, archmage. Only the strongest creatures could live on this island, and he is here. A month ago, Arata Tadu had died. He was 30 years old and an ordinary Japanese laborer. It's a bit complicated, but a voice told the guy it would shorten a long story into a short story. As a god, he accidentally made the hero die. So he will grant his wish and send him to another world. Then the voice asked Arata what he wished for. He only wished to live a quiet life on an island where no one lives. To think that being overworked to death was the mistake of a god. He also wished for a body that would not get wounds or diseases and also got a skill that could copy the skills and magic of any creature he saw. At least that's what the god recommended to him. But Arata wondered if it was really useful. After all, he's on an island where no one lives. The voice told him that it was much more interesting when there were such things. The boy exhaled and thought that everything was fine, and at least he could not think about illnesses and injuries. But he didn't have any experience with survival. He thought about whether it was hard to survive on the island alone. Clenching his fist, he thought about how it was useless to say such things now. He shouted that he would do it and try his best to live a peaceful life. Arata headed deep into the forest. As he walked through the thicket, he bumped into a tree root and jumped over a stream. Looking at his hands, he noticed that his body was moving better than before his reincarnation. He wasn't tired and could walk easily on the trails but it seemed like there was really no one on this island. He needed to find out what this island was. And first, he needed to find a source of food and water. If he wanted to eat meat, he would need to hunt animals, but he wasn't sure about that. Suddenly, he was afraid of something, but it was just a rabbit that ran at him from a bush. He was surprised that they were here. Arata thought that they could be eaten if cooked properly. Climbing the mountain in the night, the boy standing on the cliff shouted that he would do it and live alone. Now it wasn't a boring life and he would live a fun life on this island. The rabbit looked at the boy cutely and the boy couldn't help himself. Arata apologized to the animal for his actions. He had to do this to survive. Reaching for the rabbit, the animal became wary. The rabbit jumped straight at the hero and kicked him in the stomach, then sat back down in front of him and looked into his eyes. No one realized what had happened. The rabbit looked questioningly at the guy. The hero assumed he had attacked him since he realized he was trying to catch him. He apologized to the hare and said that he was his lunch today. After Arata tried to catch the rabbit again, it jumped out of the guy's hands. Without thinking, the hero hit the rabbit that was in the jump and hit it. He stunned the animal, which sealed itself into the tree across the street with terrible force. Arata was greatly surprised. He didn't realize what it was just now and how did it fly back to the tree. He had never seen a rabbit flying like that. Since this is another world, there must have been rabbits like that here. Arata assumed that the rabbit was unconscious, and now he could just pick it up, and leaned over to the animal. As he bent down, he saw a large wolf in front of him, which noticed the hero grinning. The boy cursed and was frightened. He would like to run away, but he thought he would be chased. The wolf's gaze fell on the rabbit. Arata thought that the wolf was chasing the rabbit and not him. In that case, the guy grabbed the rabbit's carcass and rushed off with all his might. He ran as fast as he could 
and decided soon to hide behind a tree and see if there was a chase. Breathing out, the boy thought about the fact that no one was chasing him. He exhaled calmly. He was scared, and for a second he actually thought he was going to die. This was what it meant to live alone. Arata looked sadly at the forest, but it was already too late. He didn't know what kind of beasts would be in this place, so now he decided to go back to the beach. The next morning, he decided to look for a water source. By nightfall, he came to the rocky shore, and walking to the beach itself, he decided it would be safe here. He ran as far as he never would have been able to, but he was not particularly tired. Whether or not that had anything to do with the strength that allowed him not to get sick or injured. But he still didn't regret asking God to do this so he could be alone. He wondered if he could really live alone on this island. Barely covering his eyes, Arata wondered. There was a whole night sky in front of him. It was all studded with stars, and Arata marveled at how beautiful it was. He got to his feet and began to gaze up at the stars. He was sure that everything would be fine, and he smiled. If he could watch this view every day, he would definitely be fine. Raising his fist to the sky, he said he would be. Joyfully, he raised both hands up and shouted to the whole island that he would do it. He's going to live alone. Now it's not a boring life, and he will live a fun life on this island. Arata had the thought that when he woke up, he would be back in his room and living a normal life. But it really wasn't a dream, and that was great. True, he thought his body would be sore, since he was sleeping on rocks. He stretched himself quite a bit, and said that a body that doesn't get injured or sick is wonderful. It was an exorbitant strength. He decided to walk around the island. Perhaps he could find something to eat here, and he also had to find a source of water. As he walked along the shore, he saw something. It was a girl lying unconscious on the beach. Arata was very surprised to see that it was a person. He ran up to her, and thought why was she in such a place and unconscious? He thought she came from the sea. But he didn't have time to think about such things. He checked to see if she was breathing, and thought about how he had only seen such things in movies. He wondered if he could do the same. Thinking briefly, the guy clenched his teeth and said he had to do it. Turning the girl towards him, he apologized to her and asked her to listen to her complaints afterwards. Leaning his lips against her mouth, he began to give her CPR and heart massage. He tried this a few times. He noticed that it was a little noticeable, but she was breathing. Rolling over on the sand, he exhaled with relief and said that it had passed. Arata smiled as he saw her skin color return to normal. Color appeared on her cheeks. Arata thought to himself that this girl was simply beautiful. But there shouldn't be other people on this island, so why is she here? Wouldn't she feel bad if he left her like this? The only reason he was doing it was to keep her alive. Blushing, the hero began to undress her, trying not to look at her. After undressing the girl he looked at her red underwear, it was the same color as her hair. On second thought he turned away and said he shouldn't look at it. The girl was still unconscious. The sun was already high in the sky, and in that time the guy had time to change the girl into dry clothes. Breathing out, he thought about the fact that he was done. Arata thought about her wet clothes needing to be dried. He hung the clothes on the rope that was attached between two large sticks. Now when he looked at all this, he really felt like he was in some fantasy world. These clothes looked like the kind of clothes that could only be found in such a world. The girl opened her eyes, and seeing the young man asked, Who is he? The hero noticed that she was awake and smiled. Sitting down to her, he said his name was Arata. He thought she was in danger, so he saved her. The girl said she understood him, and tried to slowly get up. The hero asked if it was okay for her to get up, since it was still early. She looked at her clothes in surprise. Arata embarrassedly said that her clothes were wet, so he changed them. The girl realizing everything blushed. The hero suggested that he shouldn't have done that. She asked his name again. The girl smiled, and thanked the hero for saving her. Not expecting such a response, Arata was surprised, but then smiled and said he was glad she was okay. When the girl came to her senses, the hero asked her what her name was. It was as if she had just remembered it, and said that she had completely forgotten that she had not introduced herself. Her name is Rhianna Mistoral. The guy asked what a girl like her was doing unconscious on the beach. Rhianna replied that she was assigned to go to an island called the farthest island in existence. As they were sailing towards the island, 
a massive storm hit them. To be honest, she thought they were all going to die. She asked if Arata lived on this island. The boy was confused and didn't know what to answer her in that case. He could not tell her that he had died in another world and that God had brought him here. He naively told her that he had somehow found himself here. He laughed, for he did not know what to say to her. The girl looked at him in surprise. She accepted this answer and said that there are many people with different stories. But Arata had saved her, and that was all she needed to know. Surprised by Rene's reaction like that, the guy smiled. He thanked her for understanding. But she smilingly said that she was the one who should be thanking him. In that case, he suggested that she take a little break after which she should go and look for food and water. Rena agreed. After a while, they went to the forest, and Arata went first. When he looked back, he asked if Rena was alright and suggested that she take a break for a while. The girl was exhausted and noticed that Arata didn't seem to care. She said he was in good physical shape. The hero said he was surprised at that. She didn't understand why he was surprised. But anyway, this island is a bit strange, and he asked Rihanna if she thought the same. She noticed that they were already far away from their place. She thought about the huge island and the king. She wondered why the king didn't know about it. The hero asked her to wait and noticed a pack of wolves approaching them. Arata was frightened. Those were the same wolves he saw yesterday, and it was bad. They were definitely going to eat them, and he asked the girl to run. But Rihanna, with a sly smile, asked why he wanted to run away. Why would she, the archmage whose name is Rihanna Mistola, run away? There's not the slightest chance of that happening. Raising her hand, she summoned a gust of wind. At once, all the wolves were hit by it and were stunned. In a moment, they were already lying unconscious on the ground. Arata froze and thought that it was magic. The girl smiled. She was pleased with herself. The guy noticed one of the wolves had survived and wanted to attack from behind. He shouted to Rihanna to be careful. After blocking her, he set himself up for the wolf, which latched onto his arm with its teeth. The girl was frightened, and the guy first clenched his teeth out of habit from the pain. Then he just stood up with the wolf clawing at him lightly, and said it didn't hurt at all. The girl was shocked, and asked if he was alright. Arata assumed that he was probably already weak from her attack. He thought about the fact that nothing would happen if a weakling like him hit him. After hitting the wolf with his fist, the wolf flew off to the side with terrifying force. Arata and Rihanna froze in misunderstanding. With that punch, the wolf blew down a tree right in front of them. Arata thought immediately of the rabbit that the same thing happened to. The girl looked at the guy fearfully and asked who he was. The hero asked the girl what was wrong, but she waved her hand and told him that when she signaled him to run away. Arata turned and saw a huge wolf that was no match for the previous pack. Breaking a huge branch under his paw, he grinned at the heroes. The wolf began destroying trees in the vicinity, preparing to strike them. The shocked Arata thought that it was the boss of the wolf pack. They won't even be able to defeat him together, he was on a completely different level. The girl shouted to Arata to run away now. Rina used magic, but her strike didn't even scratch the animal. Arata noticed that her magic was much more powerful than last time. He didn't really understand it, but it was clearly more powerful. The girl couldn't believe how her magic didn't work on him. The huge wolf pounced right on the girl, and the girl froze in terror before its teeth. At the last moment, she was grabbed by Arata, who flew aside with her. He asked if she was okay. Rina asked him why he didn't run away. She yelled at him and asked him what the hell he was doing. She told him to run away. But even if he ran, that wolf would have caught up with him. But the girl understood and shouted that in that case, she would cover him with her body and slow him down. Arata smiled and thought that she was a very kind girl. Standing in front of her, he said that he wouldn't let such a girl die in such a place. He shouted to the wolf to attack him, saying that he was his opponent. He had already realized that the wolf wanted to kill him, but he would survive. God gave him a second chance when he died and let him live here. There was no way he could die after traveling this far. And even if he couldn't win, he would pave the way for Rihanna to escape. The girl begged the guy to stop. Gathering all the strength in his fist, Arata punched the wolf, which flew off high above the ground. The blow was so strong that the wolf simply vanished into thin air. The hero looked up at the sky in amazement and then at his arm. 
It seems to be a gift from a god. A body that doesn't get hurt or sick. It made him stronger than he expected. He looked at Rianne, who was just standing a pillar and staring motionlessly at the sky. The hero sighed heavily and didn't know what to say. It seemed to him that a lot of interesting things would happen from now on. The gods accidentally killed him, and the hero reincarnated here and began his second life. He was told that he could wish for anything he wanted. He wished for a body that was free of disease and injury, and he could copy someone's skills just by watching them do it. And so he began his peaceful life on an island where no one lives. He thought about the fact that the power given to him from God was too cheater. He looked at Arata and she told him that she had never seen a human being take down a monster so easily. She smiled and asked the hero if this was normal for him. Arata didn't know what to answer or what it was like. But the girl thought of magic. She told Arata that even when she used body strengthening, she wouldn't be able to do anything like what he did. She assumed that the guy wanted to tell her about his magic being stronger than hers, who is a mage of seven stars. Arata was taken aback. Rina smiled evilly and asked if the guy was implying that. Arata said he was joking because he didn't even know about magic before. He didn't know how he could get out of this situation. After all, if he told her the truth about God and reincarnation, she would definitely not believe him. Getting frustrated, the hero lowered his gaze. Rina thought she said something unnecessary and apologized to him. She didn't want to interrogate him. She was just greatly surprised. After all, he was her savior and had even saved her from a huge wolf. He didn't blame her. If he was in her shoes, he would have thought the same thing. He couldn't let a young girl be so pessimistic. Because he's a grown man and he's 30 now and he has to do something. Smiling, Arata asked Rina not to make a sad face and said he wasn't angry with her. The girl assumed that he was holding her for a child and puffed up her cheeks. But Arata spread his hands and said he wasn't. But she didn't mind. The guy was glad that the girl cheered up a little. Arata asked Rianne, since she was one of the seven star mages, is it really that amazing? He seemed to have angered her, and Arata thought about how he had blurted out the wrong thing again. She was just shocked that he didn't know about the seven star mages. She marveled at how isolated one had to be to not know about it. The hero said he didn't remember anything, but Rihanna took that as an excuse. Still, she decided to tell her. Mage of the Seven Stars is a title given to the strongest mages in the country. They are so strong that they can withstand a fight with a dragon. People all over the continent admire them. And she was also the youngest seven star mage in history. The hero was amazed and said she was amazing. The girl cowered at him. She thought about the fact that if she used body reinforcement to its full potential, she wouldn't be able to do anything like what Arata did. That's why she was curious about him, but he had already realized that himself. Arata gloomily thought about the fact that if he went to the mainland, he would most likely be captured. Rina said that it was no time for them to rest, and they needed to find a water source as soon as possible. The hero agreed with her. He suggested she follow his path and pointed out the road. He thought he heard the sound of flowing water. As they walked further into the forest, they noticed a wide stream and marveled. Rina said that he was right. They had traveled a long way since then, and he really did hear the sound of water. Rina looked at him puzzled. Arata leaned over the water and said that the problem was that they didn't know if they could drink it. But since his body wasn't sick, he would be perfectly fine if anything happened. But Rina might not have been well. Taking the water in his hands, the guy said he had to take a good look to see if it was drinkable. Taking a sip, he noticed that it was just refreshing and smiled. There didn't seem to be anything poisonous in the water. Turning around, he said the water was quite drinkable. He was surprised. Rihanna had already gotten a table somewhere where she was cutting vegetables and making soup. The boy called out to her and walked over. She was concentrated and got angry when the hero interrupted her. She asked Aratu what he wanted. The hero noticed that her eyes were like an expert's. He asked her where she got all these supplies from. She said she used storage magic, as if there was nothing surprising, and asked what was the matter. Arata didn't understand what she meant, and the girl noticed that. She told him that with that magic, she could put and take anything she wanted, whenever she wanted, and wherever she wanted. The guy thought about how it was like a distortion of space. The storage space changes depending on the magic power of the user. 
Since she is a great mage, she has as much storage space as other mages. Arata was surprised by her as usual. She asked him to just relax while she cooked. Arata grinned and thought about how cool this magic was, and he would want one too. Suddenly, he noticed something like a portal in front of him, and stuck out his hand, which half disappeared behind the thing. Arata was surprised. It seems he was able to use storage magic. Could it be the power that God gave him? The ability to copy skills just by seeing them. A girl turned to him and nervously asked him to relax. She asked what he was doing, and Arata pretended nothing happened. He noticed that the magic was gone, and Rihanna didn't realize anything. If she saw what just happened, he would be in trouble again. The hero thought about this being a useful thing. She asked to hold his pot while she prepared the table. The girl stood in front of the broken stones, and conjured a table with magic. Arata was once again amazed. Now it was necessary to get the dishes. And so after a moment she finished and the table was set. Since she's an AES rank adventurer, she was used to doing all this in wild places. She served a dish to the guy and the guy's saliva flowed. The tomato soup looked really delicious. His stomach rumbled and he apologized to Rene. She grinned and said he was like a child. Taking a seat at the table, she motioned for him to start eating. Before he could pull back his chair and sit down at the table, Arata saw a girl with ears and tails sitting on his chair that smiled and looked at the heroes. There was silence. He thought about who it was and noticed the girl wearing fluffy ears and nine tails. He was already speculating what it might be. It was a beast woman. She sniffed the soup and said she loved the smell. She called Rena's sister and said it was great. Arata just watched her eat his soup and cursed to himself thinking where did this child come from? He asked Rena what they were even supposed to do in a case like this. Suddenly a shiver ran through Rene's entire body. The girl clutched her shoulders and Ada asked her worriedly if she was feeling alright. But Rena replied that she was fine. The guy noticed that she was looking at this girl and suspected that she knew something about her. Arata looked at the empty pot and thought about the fact that if they left her out now, she would eat their portion as well. He sternly told the brute that she couldn't eat a stranger's portion. Rena was scared for him and asked if he was alright. Rena told Arata that if the girl wanted to eat then let her eat as much as she wanted. But Arata disagreed with her. She might have been a child, but that was why it was necessary to teach her the right things. Rena agreed and asked to let the girl go. Arata noticed that the girl was somehow tense. The guy put the girl on the ground and asked what his name was. The girl said her name was Luna. In that case, he ducked down to be on the same level as her and said that they were about to have lunch and she had just eaten his lunch. The girl was upset. The girl lowered her ears and looked away pitifully, apologizing to the hero. Arata stroked her head and said that if she apologized, then in that case it was okay. He smiled at her and she smiled back at him. The hero asked Rihanna if they had a lot of food to spare. She told him that to get to the isolated island, she thought it would take half a year. So they had to have plenty of food. The guy apologized to Rihanna and asked if she could cook food for this girl. Rihanna looked at Luna in surprise, who smiled at her, and she happily agreed. Luna unbelievingly asked again if it was really possible and was immensely happy. Luna walked up to Rihanna and calling her sister thanked her. Rihanna smiled at the girl and said that in that case she would go cook and asked her to wait a bit. The hero thanked the girl for her help, but he still couldn't rely on Rihanna all the time. He could become a side character if things stayed like this. The guy frowned. Luna asked the hero what his name was, and Arata introduced himself to her. He had asked the god for this island to be suitable for him to live alone, and of course that meant everything he needed to survive was on this island. He needed to learn how to cook and lighten the load for Rihanna. Luna, meanwhile, was getting impatient to eat. Now that Arata thought about it, it should be an island without humans, but are there other beastmen like Luna? The boy leaned over to Luna and asked her if she lived on this island. In that case, he asked her to answer him. Does anyone else besides her live here on the island? Luna answered in the affirmative and said that she belonged to the tribe of divine beasts. And there were other tribes such as the demon tribe, the ancient tribe, the dragon tribe, and the vampire tribe. There are many different tribes here. Luna was telling this at full joy. The hero smiled and said he understood. So there was no human tribe here. 
Meanwhile, Rina had already finished cooking and brought the soup. After putting the dishes on the table, they all ate together. As the sun was setting, it was time to set up camp and Rina was able to set up a large tent with magic. She smiled and said that this was their base from now on. And since Luna had left, going in and closing the tent behind her, she suggested they talk about today. They lit a lamp in the tent. Rina continued their previous conversation and said that she was one of the seven star mages and she was going to go to an isolated island. It was rumored that there was a cure that made a person immortal and their goal was to find it here. The hero noticed that she wasn't just talking about herself and the girl said that she had traveled here with a few nights. But looking at the situation, she was sure they had survived. Rina was upset by this and lowered her gaze. Placing the mug on the table, Rina replied that if Luna was indeed telling the truth earlier, it was in all likelihood that isolated island. Guy thought about how all the tribes she had told about back then sounded serious. He looked questioningly at Rina and assumed that Luna was just an ordinary girl. But Rina sternly told him that he didn't understand anything, since he didn't know magic. That child had much more magic power than her. So that's why she was so scared back then. To be perfectly honest, Luna is a monster. If she were to appear on the mainland, it would cause worldwide destruction. The hero noticed that she didn't seem to be. Rina agreed and said that she didn't think she could do something like that either. But she just wanted to warn him about how strong she was. Arata asked Rina about the other tribes, and she told him that both the divine beasts and also the demons, they were all mythology that had faded into history. They roamed the continent when the human species did not yet exist. There was also a story that dragons had appeared before, who easily destroyed entire cities. And vampires are completely made up monsters that no one believes exist. And that's why she was saying that, and yet they had actually met this beast. Basically, this island is completely unusual. Rina replied that they don't know about what kind of monsters like Luna they will meet yet. Until they explore the island properly, it would be better for them not to meet them. No matter how strong they are with Arata, they are only human. They should be careful not to meet them, and think about how to escape from this island. The hero wondered, what about the medicine she was talking about? Rina sighed sadly, and said it was fine. In general, they did not even know if this island really existed. In any case, the entire expedition team had been swept away. If they want to properly deal with the situation on this island, they will need real knights. After all, the hero had already decided to live on this island, so he didn't want strangers to come here. He told the girl that in that case, they would need a boat if they wanted to leave the island. And they needed to do something about it. Rina smiled and said that Arata would have to work hard for them to achieve what they wanted. The hero smiled and thought about the fact that she smelled so optimistic. But in order for him to live peacefully on this island, cooperation with Rina is definitely necessary. With his body that doesn't get injured, he definitely won't die. Also, he can use an ability that copies other skills just by seeing them. He could ask Rina to teach him a few things, but he planned to live on this island for the rest of his life. Rina had a different opinion than him. He decided that until Rina got off this island, he would cooperate with her and he would work as hard as he could to help her at least a little bit. The next morning, the boy got out of bed unhappily. He would never have thought of sleeping in the same tent with a girl. He didn't think it would ever happen, and he still couldn't sleep. Rina was already up and wished him a good morning. She asked if he was okay and noticed the guy had dark circles under his eyes, but he waved it off and said he was fine. Getting out of bed, the hero decided to wash up by the river, and the girl asked him to be careful. Coming out of the tent, he took a deep breath of fresh air and smiled. Today was another nice sunny day. A lot of things happened yesterday, but it would be nice if today went smoothly. Just then, Luna came up to him and wished him a good morning. The hero was not thrilled by her presence. Next to her was a beastman guy who looked at Arata gloomily and without approval. The hero asked him who he was. The man without introducing himself asked if the hero was a newcomer to this island. The hero was beginning to doubt that he would have a peaceful day today. The beastman looked at him sternly without averting his gaze. Arata realized from one look that he was very strong. The man said that his name was Elga, and he belonged to the tribe of divine beasts. He asked the hero what his name was. 
After Arata introduced himself, Elga looked at the tent and asked what about the girl that was storing her magical power inside. He turned to Rianne and said that if she was going to fight, he would gladly do so. But if not, she had better stop doing so. Rina tensed up. She knew that she wouldn't be able to do anything against Elg anyway. The girl walked out of the tent and looked at the guests. The hero was surprised that a first-class mage from Seven Stars was making such a face. This beast must be very powerful. Arata gingerly looked at the beastman and the girl called out to him. Just then, the girl pushed Elga with her hand. She sternly told him that he had promised not to fight them if she brought him here. He knew that, and said that they were the first ones to start it. Luna looked at him judgmentally, and said it was because of his intimidating face. After all, when she came to them, they treated her to a delicious meal. The hero thought to himself that he was not his enemy after all. Reluctantly, Arata asked Elga what business he had here. The harsh beastman asked to just call him Elga, without the nickname Mr. He told the heroes that they were in his territory, and Arata apologized to him. They had no idea how they had gotten here in the first place. They had no intention of staying on this island. And so they didn't know whose territory this was. That was quite understandable to Elch. After all, there was no way for humans to get to this island of Arcadia. It was the island of the gods by their own will. The hero thought about his conversation with Rihanna about the island, and assumed they were talking about the same thing. Elga told them that as long as they weren't cutting down forests or doing any other bad things, he didn't care much about them, but urged them to be careful. After all, they were a tribe of divine beasts and not very aggressive, but there was also a tribe of demons with dragons who would gladly chase after them. Arata scratched the back of his head, thinking about all the races here with a hard temper. He asked Elga to tell him more about this island, but he coldly replied that he wasn't going to suffer any bullshit here though he supposed it would be difficult for them to get around the island without knowing anything. Elga said that he had no choice, and promised to bring the map, asking the heroes to wait for a while. With the speed of the wind, Elga jumped straight to the treetops and disappeared as quickly as he appeared. The hero thought he was a good guy, since he had to put so much effort into bringing him the map. Luna smiled at Arata, and said that Elga was always saying nasty things, and it didn't bother him. But at the end of the day, He's a man you could count on, and he's kind. Arata noticed that too. The hero turned to Rianne, whose legs had gone under. She grabbed her head with her hand, and Arata picked her up. He asked what was wrong with her, but she said she was fine. She just felt a huge amount of concentrated magic hit her. Her body wouldn't stop shaking. Luna just as worriedly approached them. The hero didn't really understand what was going on, but was this only characteristic of mages? He couldn't think that her body could have reached such a state just by contact with the island's inhabitant. Luna lowered her ears worriedly, thinking it was all her fault. But Rina stroked her head and told her it wasn't her fault, and neither was Elga. Rina told her that it was her fault because her magic was weak. She asked Luna not to be so sad, and that cheered the girl up. Rina smiled, and thought about how even though Luna has such high power, she doesn't blame anyone else and always takes responsibility for herself. The hero thought the same thing, that even though she was younger than him, he felt supported by her. Back came Elga, who called out to the hero and said that he had found the map. At this moment, Luna was already sitting with Arata at the table and eating a dish. Elga was mad. He had spent hours to get the map for him. So why the hell were they sitting there enjoying their meal now? Rina came up to him and asked if he wanted some too. Elga took a seat at the table next to Luna, and Rhianus served him a dish. After tasting it, he was simply delighted. Swearing, Elga shouted to the whole island, Why the hell was it so delicious? The hero assumed that all the members of the Beast tribe had a habit of shouting when eating food. After a hearty meal, Luna and Elga lay down on the grass, after which Elga said that it was delicious. Rina and Arata went to the creek to wash the dishes, after which the guy said they were finally done. Looking at the clean plate, he thought about what kind of relationship these guys have. Luna looked like a fox and Elga looked like a wolf, so they probably weren't blood relatives. But they acted like kin. Rina thanked Arata, and the hero thought she was talking about the dishes. But after all, she made so much delicious food, it was the least he could do for her. But Rina said it wasn't. Earlier, when Elga started threatening them, 
He stood up for her, and she thanked him for that. Arata understood what she meant, but he didn't turn out to be their enemy, so it was a minor misunderstanding. But that wasn't what Rihanna meant. She didn't think about the fact that there would ever come a time when someone would defend her. So she was a little touched by that, and smiled. The hero looked at her, and a blush appeared on her cheeks. Standing up and heading back, Rihanna suggested to go back to the tent. Arata agreed with her, and thought about Elga telling them many things about the island. Elga showed the hero a map of Arcadia. He showed him where the Beastmen's territory was, and where the demons and dragons lived. Elga said that they don't get along well with them, but since they all know they will suffer great losses, they only feud occasionally. There were also elves living here. Although they didn't go outside their territory for some reason, they often encounter them. Arata thought about it, and asked Elga if the other species got along with each other, but he said that they didn't. And it wasn't that they needed to get along with each other to survive. It was just that they had been living here for so long that they weren't interested in fighting each other anymore. The hero was afraid at first of having to fight against tons of strong monsters, after all, but luckily it seems he was able to relax a bit. Arata told Elga that he would like to continue living on this island and asked if there was a good place where he could stay. Elga was shocked by what he said and asked if he was serious. He said that there was no place for a weak race like humans to live here. However, the hero thought about the fact that with his body that God gave him, he thought about doing well. But he didn't know how to tell Elga about it. Suddenly, the hero heard some noise. Elga sharpened his ears. Listening to the noise, his saliva flowed and his eyes sparkled. He said that an imperial boar was approaching them. Rihanna didn't understand what he meant, but Luna said excitedly that it was a celebration. Arata asked Elga, what kind of boar is that? In short, it's a huge piece of meat. Luna picked up on Elga's words and said that it was also very tasty. Despite being very big, they are usually underground, so they were hard to find. Rina turned to Arata and said that although she didn't want to be one, the boar was a very strong monster. And if it appeared in a big city, all the knights of the country would be summoned to fight it. The roar of the boar was heard, and it came right out at the boys. It was just huge, and was destroying all the trees in its path. Rina was just shocked and stood in a stupor. Arata looked at it as if he wasn't surprised anymore and asked if it was too big. Elga noticed that the boar looked quite hungry and asked Luna if that was the case. He told the girl that she was still a child and asked her to watch. Luna objected and told Elga that adults always say that and then keep the best parts for themselves. Elga said that only adults could appreciate that flavor, but Luna started to argue with him. Elga shouted that this was the way the world worked, and if she wanted to eat the best piece, she should have killed the boar before he did. Luna accepted his challenge. Meanwhile, the boar was rushing at breakneck speed straight towards the pair. Arta thought about them looking strong, and assumed that they should overpower it in such a state. But he still doubted them a little. He thought in horror that if they didn't manage to stop him, they would be in danger. But the boar did not stop, and swept away everything in its path. And weren't they themselves being dragged behind them? Rina exclaimed, what should they do in such a situation? The hero thought about the fact that if this continued, Rina would be in danger. If that's what happens, he decided to cover her with himself. Rina was terrified and asked what he was doing, since they needed to escape. But he decided to rely on the power of a god and have faith in her. If they couldn't find a way to stop even him, there was no way they could survive on this island. Arata was determined. Rina yelled at Arata, and he said it was okay. The boar ran up to them and abruptly stopped right in front of the heroes. Arata stopped it with his bare hands. Elga and Luna were also shocked. This couldn't have happened. Elga thought about whether he was even human. Luna was in awe of the hero. In that case, Arata shouted that the meat goes to him. In this world, either kill or be killed. He apologized to the monster and clenched his fist. He shouted at it that it would become his lunch and hit it with all his might. Knocking Luna and Elga off the boar, the animal flew straight up to the sky. Arata was ecstatic. The imperial boar was now his, but everyone was looking puzzled at the sky and didn't see the prey. Arata only then realized what had happened. Everyone squealed at the same moment, for the meat was gone. Rihanna exhaled heavily and said that all common sense was gone. Elga shouted that they had missed such a rarity. Luna was also beyond angry 
and the hero apologized to them. Rina and Arata stood by the villages and gazed into the distance. A huge boar had demolished an impressive portion of the forest. Elga shouted at the hero how dare he do that to an imperial boar, and Luna agreed with him and told the hero that he was evil. Arata didn't know what to say back, so he just apologized to them. Rina asked the two of them to calm down. She smiled and promised to make them a meal later, but on the condition that they forgive the hero. Elgar reluctantly agreed, and Luna looked angrily at Arata, saying that he should thank Rina for forgiving him. The hero looked at Rina in embarrassment and thanked her for her help. The hero then suggested that they continue their past conversation. Elga told the guy that if he wanted to live on this island, he could stay in this area. There was plenty of land in the area, so he shouldn't have any trouble getting food. Arata asked him, wasn't he the one who had said earlier that he couldn't stay here? Elga answered him that it was because he thought he was human, and the boy thought of what he was. Elga sternly told the hero that he didn't understand. After all, a human can't stop an imperial boar, nor can he send it flying with one blow. Arata exhaled and said that he was human after all. Elga smiled at him and said that he was a cool guy. Besides, Luna had already gotten attached to him as well. So there was no problem with him staying here. The hero smiled and thanked Elga for the permission. Arata turned to Rene and asked what about her. Rina replied that she still had no way to go home or do anything else right now. And since she thought that she couldn't survive here on the island alone, she decided to stay for a while with Arata. Luna exclaimed happily to them that in that case they could now continue to play together. Everyone was happy, and the hero smiled thinking about the fact that Luna and Rina seemed to be having fun. He was glad they were enjoying it. Suddenly, the guy looked up into the sky and his face changed dramatically. Rina asked him what was wrong. Pointing his finger to the sky, Arata asked Rina what it was up there. Elga didn't want to believe it. Rina noticed the dragon wings too. It was the very real dragon. The black dragon stood up on its hind legs. It was huge and had a pair of wings behind its back. The heroes were terrified. Elga scolded at it, noticing that the creature was from the dragon tribe. And it was only a child of Bahamut. Arata noticed that the dragon was holding a boar. It was the same imperial boar he had sent flying. But why did this dragon take it? Looking down, it abruptly brought the carcass down on the heroes. In one voice, the guys screamed about what the fuck is going on. The hero thought about it being some part of the game, specially created by a god. A huge boar carcass came down on the heroes, but Arata was able to hold it over them. He asked the boys if they were okay. Luna exclaimed that he was awesome, but Elga only affirmatively said that he wasn't human. Arata looked up and noticed that the dragon was coming towards them. He yelled for everyone to get down and threw the boar right at the dragon. Elga asked the hero if he was sure he could stop the dragon, and the guy said he was sure he could. Elga said that in that case Arata would stop it, and he asked him to leave the rest to him. Arata understood him. Elga began to build up the power to strike as the dragon flew at them. Luna squealed with delight, but Rina was of a different opinion and only watched silently. Arata shouted to the dragon to receive and heard the dragon saying that it was him, the sincere man. Suddenly from the cloudy haze right on the hero something fell from above. The dragon turned into a girl who had dragon horns on her head. She smiled and told the hero that it was brave of him to propose to her like that. Everyone was shocked. Arata couldn't understand what was going on. The girl hugged the hero and calling him her husband, told him that his body was quite strong and perfect for hugging. He didn't know what to say in response, so he just thanked her. It wasn't like she had any bad intentions, and he didn't understand why she said he was a husband. And this child was that dragon. Arat was worried about that, and he turned to Rihanna to ask what they should do. Turning around, he saw that Rihanna was feeling sick again, and she had fallen to her knees. Running up to her, he worriedly asked her if she was okay. She said that she was fine, and just had too much energy hit her again. The hero insisted that she didn't look fine at all. The magical power of Elga and this child must be too much for Rihanna. Taking Rihanna in his arms, the guy said that they need to get out of here. The girl blushed and wanted to say something to him. The hero said he would listen to her complaints later. In the meantime, they had to get out of here, and he rushed away from the guys with all his might. 
the dragon girl called them after him, calling the hero her husband. They ran to the river deep in the forest, and Arata sat Rihanna against a tree. She looked quite ill and was breathing heavily. The hero felt sorry for her, hugging the girl. He asked her to calm down and breathe slowly and deeply. For a while, they were in an embrace while Rihanna was breathing heavily. At this time, the hero felt awkward and embarrassed, and it seems that Rihanna felt the same way. At one point, she just fell asleep, which surprised Arodu. But then he smiled and decided that she looked pretty tired. It wasn't surprising since so much had happened today. His attention was drawn to a rustle from the bush. It was Luna. She was worried about them and asked if Rihanna was all right. She looked at the girls sadly. She asked Arata if they came closer to her, could they hurt her? Arata smiled and stroked her head and said that children have nothing to worry about. He also noticed that Rihanna liked spending time with Luna, so if she said things like that, she might get upset. The hero told Luna that if she was really worried about Rihanna, then have her try to suppress her magic power as much as she could when she was around her. Because if she does that, then Rihanna will be perfectly fine. The girl said she would try her best. The boy asked Luna if she could watch Rihanna for a while, and Luna asked him what he was going to do. The boy wanted to go and find out why this dragon had come to them. Meanwhile, Elga was holding the girl that demanded to let her go. He sternly told her that if he let her go, she would run after the others. Noticing the guy that came out of the forest, she told him that her husband had returned. Elga asked Arata if everything was alright, and the guy said that now Rihanna had calmed down too. The hero approached the girl and asked her to tell him her name. She smiled and said her name was Teltu. She was the daughter of the great Bahamut and was part of the great dragon tribe of this island. Arata wondered, for he had heard of Bahamut in comics and games before. Seeing her, he would have no idea that she was a great dragon. Arata introduced himself and said that he started living on this island just yesterday. She admiringly told the guy that her husband's name sounded like a powerful name. Hesitantly, he thanked her and asked why she was calling him her husband. Teltu looked at him questioningly and didn't understand why he was asking her such questions. After all, it was obvious. After all, he had bravely proposed to her and she had gladly accepted. The hero was stumped as to what she was talking about. Scratching the back of his head, he said that he hadn't made her any proposal. Teltu was stunned and asked what about the imperial boar he sent them. He took a very strong monster, gave it magical powers, and gave it to the girl. This was how one should propose to the representatives of the ancient dragon tribe. And he, as her husband, sent them an amazing strong monster. When Arata sent them this boar, she had no choice but to accept the offer. The hero asked her to wait for a second and let her think. He asked her to explain what she meant by him sending her an imperial boar. Teltu told of how they were dozing when suddenly an imperial boar fell on them from the sky. When she went to look for where it had fallen from, she found him, her husband. They only accept those who are stronger than they are. And then she found a husband who was stronger than her, and she was delighted. In that case, the hero asked her why she had thrown them the imperial boar. It was all because she accepted the offer, and it was an expression that they could raise a family together and eat together. The guy sadly exhaled and said that he understood. He realized now that she hadn't done anything wrong to them, but he hadn't even intended to propose to her. But he felt that this misunderstanding was entirely his fault. And so he decided to explain everything to her step by step. Arata told her that in all honesty it was an accident, and that the imperial boar had fallen just where they were sleeping. She asked him in horror that all this time he hadn't proposed to her, and all this time he had just been leading her around by the nose. Arata sadly agreed. She understood, sadly saying that there was a misunderstanding. She made a circle on the ground with her wand. After sitting down to draw, she sadly said that even among the ancient dragons, they were so strong that no one wanted to approach them. And she was so happy that there was a chance that she would finally have a chance to find a husband. The hero felt awkward and apologized. Almost in tears, Teltu said that first of all there would never be anyone who would want to marry someone like her, and she finally realized it. Elga told the hero that this dragon was annoying him, and the guy said it was mean of him. The girl kept drawing circles on the ground, quietly saying to herself that no one would ever get close to her. The hero assumed that although she was a child, she was also a loner in her tribe. 
What this meant was that he could do a terrible thing. He felt very sorry for her and looked at the boar. He called out to Thelta. He suggested that they all eat this imperial boar together. She interrogated him and with tears in her eyes asked him if it was true. Thelta thought he would trick her and chase her away, but the boy took her hand. The hero told her that he, Luna and Elga, as well as Thelta, they would all eat together. Also, she could be their friend and they would just start by eating together. The girl looked at Arata in surprise. She happily said that she could cook well. She showed the hero that she could breathe fire out of her mouth, and the guy said that was cool. In that case, he left it up to her. Elga and Arata looked at each other and smiled at each other. In that case, they decided to go to Rianne and ask her how they would cook the boar. Teltu shouted happily that she would help. The hero came out of the forest and told Rina and Luna that he was back. He was accompanied by Teltu and Elga, who waved to them. The boy noticed that Rina was already awake. Rina, still sweating, looked at Elga and greeted him. He apologized to her for last time at the tent when he scared them. But she said there was no need to apologize, and it was fine. Rina replied to him that all he does is live his life, so it's her fault. Elmer remained silent and smiled. Elga turned to the hero, and smiling told him that as long as he is strong, Rihanna is strong too. The girl looked at Thelta and asked who it was. After all, when she started to lose consciousness, she never saw Teltu turn into a human. The girl happily introduced herself and said her name was Thelta. She is one of the strongest dragons on this island. Rina looked at the hero trying to understand, and Arata confirmed that she was the dragon. The girl hugged Arata and said that she was also his wife. Rina looked at them gloomily. The hero decided in horror that she would so definitely think that he was a pedophile. The hero sadly asked her to explain everything. Rina understood. She wondered if Teltu had Loki's blessing. The hero didn't understand what she meant. Loki was a god who brought trouble to the people he blesses. Rina turned to Teltu, calling her formally. The girl smiled and asked to just call her Teltu. The satisfied girl told Rina that they are in love with the same person, so they are in the same boat. Rina blushed. The hero couldn't find a place for himself, because this little one had just said what he thought. He was as embarrassed as possible. Rina had told her that it had only been two days since she and Arata had met, and so they were just friends. She wouldn't call them lovers. The girl didn't realize this, for it had only been a few hours since she had met her husband. She asked Rina. Isn't a girl's true nature to want a strong guy who can protect them? Not wanting to listen further, Rihanna blushed and said that they weren't like that. Luna sharpened her ears, and overhearing said something about thinking the same thing about Rihanna and Arata dating. After all, he had also held her in his arms recently. Elga decided to stop their conversations. It was wonderful that they were rejoicing. But Elga asked them to go back to the Imperial Boar, saying that they were wasting his time. Rina remembered about the boar and said they should cook it. Turning around, she went first. The hero was the last one left and looked at all the boys. He involuntarily began to think that he was getting tired. Coming to the boar, Arata noticed that the boar was really big. Rina suggested to Elga that she would open the belly and he would get the meat, and he agreed. Teltu lifted the boar up and asked if such a height would do. Rina thanked the dragon and smiled. She thought about the miserable things that had happened to her since she had been on the island. And now she needed to level up as a star mage. She used Saber Rose magic. Rihanna summoned wind blades that immediately slit the belly of the beast. Elga smiled, noticing that it was strong, but the rest was on him. Jumping up, he grabbed the monster's gut. Using a couple blows, he completely disemboweled the animal. The hero said it was amazing, and Luna smiled and said that Elga was the best hunter in the tribe. When it was finished, Elga wiped the rest of the blood from his face and smiled. Rina praised him and brought him some towels. Taking the towel, Elga thanked her. Now all he had to do was clean it, and then he could begin. Arata similarly thanked Elga for his help. Rina thought about how it was too late to talk, and yet, how will they eat it all? The hero assumed that something could be done with the huge parts of the meat with magic. Rina sadly told him that if she used storage magic, the food wouldn't spoil, and that would be ideal. But there was no way she could fit it all in her storage. Arata remembered something. He suggested moving everything into his storage magic. 
he would just try to visualize the meat of the Imperial boar getting into the storage magic. Here he ordered it to fit. In an instant, all the meat disappeared. Elga was shocked and said that it was very useful. Luna exclaimed that storage magic is amazing. Teltu threw herself at the hero again and said her husband was amazing. Rina alone stood still and the guy turned to her and asked what was wrong. Rina seemed to be angry. With a strained evil smile, she asked the hero how he could use storage magic and the amount of storage he possessed. Even a seven star mage like her didn't have that much space. The hero laughed nervously and thought about how it was going to be a long day. Rina said that she would definitely be asking him a lot of questions. There was a terribly attractive and delicious smell of roasting meat outside the tent. While the meat was roasting on the grill, everyone was impatiently waiting for it to cook. Elga said that it really looked amazing. Rina assessed the readiness and said they could proceed. Everyone pounced wildly on the meat. Rina asked them to take their time, as there was enough meat for everyone. Elga and Arata grabbed the biggest piece of meat with their chopsticks. Elga smiled and told the hero that he was doing a good job, and Arata answered him in the same way. Luna and Teltu dipped the meat in the sweet sauce that Rina had made. It was too delicious. The hero looked at Rina, who was smiling at the girls. He thought about the meat she was cooking right now, the best part of the boar. It was a top quality filet. The softest part of the boar, the most delicious part that melts in your mouth and there's no mistaking it. At this point, I don't think anyone has realized how amazing it is. Arata looked at the meat and said it was all his filet. Before he could reach it, the tongs hit his hands. Rina smiled at him and told him to share with everyone. The guys enjoyed the food all day, and towards the end of the day, everyone had to go home. Rina and Arata waved goodbye to the boys. At night, they made a fire by the tent. Sitting by it, Rina smiled at Arata and said that it had been a hectic day. The hero laughed and said that yesterday was a similar day, but today was downright crazy. Rina said he saved her again and asked about Teltu. The guy replied that it was his fault. He also wanted to thank her for everything she did because she was the one who made them a nice meal today and she was also the one who prepared the tent. Looking at the stars, Arata said that he would like to live on this island and use his strong body in order to protect her because if he couldn't protect her, he would be completely useless. The girl looked at him with surprise and blushed. She thought about what he said about protection. Holding back laughter, the guy asked what was the matter. She said that no one had said that to her in a long time. Mostly she was treated like an instrument or a monster. The guy said it was just awful. That's what happens to seven star mages. Even though she's one of the weakest seven star magicians, they were still considered beings that were higher than the heavens in terms of power. So no one would ever think of protecting someone like her. The hero looked at her sadly, but she smiled and told him that it showed how strange a person he was. The ones they met would cause massive catastrophes if they showed up in the land where humans lived. And Arata was on par with them, or even stronger. Rina made a point of saying something about humans not being capable of such a thing. She originally didn't want to ask him about it, but she wanted to know who Arata was. She looked at him sadly, waiting for an answer. There was silence. The guy thought about the fact that they had only known each other for two days, and she was the first person he had met on this island, and she was trustworthy. But I wonder if he could really tell her about reincarnation. She might think that he's hesitant, or has some kind of mental illness. If she didn't believe him, she might lose trust in him. He looked up at the stars and thought to himself that everything was okay. Either way, if she didn't believe him, he would just go back to living alone. But also, he didn't want to lie to this girl's face. Turning to her, he called her name. He told Rina about being born out of this world. She looked at him in surprise. She concluded from his whole story that he once died in another world, met a god, and was sent here to this island. The hero swallowed the lump in his throat. He had said all he could. Still, it would be sad if Rina decided to leave because of that. There was a pause. Unexpectedly to the hero, she said that it made some sense. The hero asked in amazement if she would believe him, but after all, he wasn't lying. Arata waved his hands and said that of course he wasn't lying, and the girl smiled. She said that of course it was hard to believe that he had met a god, but it was believable from all the crazy things that had happened to him. And since she met him, 
She'd asked him if he even knew that a normal person couldn't launch a huge monster into the air. And considering everything else he did, she could easily be convinced that he wasn't from this world. The guy thought to himself, fair enough. He sighed sadly and heavily. But now she fully understood his situation and said that he had worked very hard after all. Getting up from the chair, the girl stood opposite the hero and told him that she hoped he would take care of her. He was shocked because he thought she wouldn't believe him, but the girl smiled at him. He thanked her for everything and hoped that she would also take care of him. It had been a whole week since Arata had come to this island. He felt like he was starting to get used to life here. As for the survival he was worried about, everything was fine thanks to Rene, and he had already gotten used to this camping lifestyle. She had recently taught him magic, and now he could use various kinds of magic. However, now that he thought about it, he assumed that he was relying too much on Rene. He had to try to do an act so that Rena wouldn't have to do more than she was already doing. Walking through the forest, the boy thought he heard something. A rabbit ran up to him. It seemed to be the same little guy he had met on his very first day on the island. He had made it fly off into oblivion then, and he felt kind of bad about it. He held out his hands to the animal. Just like the first day, the rabbit pushed him right in the stomach. Taking it in his arms, Arata stroked the little guy and said he should have calmed down. For some reason, they all had a tendency to pounce on people. Standing outside the tent, Arata was babysitting the rabbit while Rihanna came out of the tent. As she approached Arata, she wished him a good morning and noticed that he was up much earlier today. The girl turned her attention to the rabbit. The guy thought about the girl wanting to hold it in her arms, but it was rebellious and wouldn't sit still. So the guy flicked him on the nose. He said it was his punishment, but noticed that the rabbit seemed to be unconscious. Frightened, he hoped he hadn't used force. He asked Rihanna what he should do. Rina sullenly asked him if he even knew what kind of rabbit it was, but the guy assumed it was just an ordinary wild rabbit. After all, such existed in his world as well. Rina asked if he knew that it was a monster of the Katastroph class. Arata didn't understand what she meant, and Rina said that it's a Catastrophe class monster that humans can't stop. When this monster appears, either they, the seven great mages, or extremely powerful adventurers will have to put their lives on the line fighting it. He showed her the rabbit once more, and interjected. It seems everything that was in his original world is different in this one. Then it was clear why that time and earlier, the rabbit had cast a strange look at him when it didn't even scratch or bite him. Then he heard the word husband, which came from not far away from him. Teltu once again on the move clung to the guy with a tenacious grip. She looked at him and marveled that he didn't die then when they faced him. Rihanna smiled and bid her good morning and asked how she was doing. The girl said she had come to play with her husband. Holding a rabbit in his hands, he asked her what she would like to play. Teltu noticed the rabbit and was delighted with the guy even more. She exclaimed that rabbits are small and run away quickly, and even she has a hard time catching them. She also said they were pretty strong, and the hero realized that Rihanna hadn't lied to him. Luna suddenly jumped on him. The guys greeted her and noticed that she was in a good mood today. Luna smiled and greeted Delta, but she only blushed and puffed up her cheeks. She hid behind the hero's back. Arata asked the girl what was wrong. Rina smiled at Luna and wished her a good morning. She stroked Luna's head and said she looked great. The girl grinned. Teltu looked at the hero and calling him her husband shouted for him to do the same to her. Arata tentatively stroked her head, much to her satisfaction. Arata and Reina looked at each other and smiled at each other. After entering the forest, Arata suggested that the girls have a hunting competition. The teams would consist of Arata and Teltu, and Rihanna and Luna. The team that managed to get the most prey would win. Luna looked impatiently at Rihanna and asked her to try harder. Teltu shouted to Arata that they would win. As they started, the heroes scattered in opposite directions. Luna managed to catch a deer, while Arata and Teltu looked out for game. They were frustrated because they couldn't find any. Teltu heard Luna praising Rihanna and told the hero that their team seemed to be doing well. As expected from an adventuress of the rank of SS, she knew how to hunt monsters. But here's the other thing, they couldn't find anyone at all. Teltu flattered herself and said that the animals on this island were afraid of them. Apparently they remembered that monstrous power 
so they don't show themselves to her. The hero thought about the fact that it's not good for the hunting competition. But if that's the case, then Luna must be going through the same thing. Unless Rihanna is doing all the work. Taoku shouted to Arata that Chu, they will lose if this continues and said they have to do something. Either way, something had to be found. Girio didn't know any hunting tactics yet, and his magic wasn't strong enough to support Thelta yet. Was there anything he could do with the power he had? He looked at his hand. He exclaimed an idea popped into his head. Teltu rejoiced, and the boy asked that it be granted to him. He sat down in the middle of the forest and concentrated. This is the body the god gave him. And if he concentrated well, he could hear sounds in the distance. Deeper and deeper into the forest his mind went. Suddenly he heard a clear prey, and Teltu ran after Arata. He thought it was a boar, but it was a whole pack of rabbits. They all ran at once at the hero, Arata thought they would, but they were running away from Teltu, since she is a dragon. However, he will not let them run away. With these thoughts, he took the stone in his hands. While the rabbits were looking back at their fellow rabbits who were already hit, Teltu met them from the front and angrily told them that they could not escape. Teltu was delighted and shouted to the hero that she had caught one. Arata praised her and told her there was one left. He thought about what would keep it from escaping and touched the ground to concentrate. Arata applied the earth magic Rihanna had taught him called asshole. The magic would shape the earth as they envisioned it, something the hero envisioned. He made a cage out of the earth and the rabbit stopped in front of it. Teltu shouted to him that the rabbit could easily destroy such a wall, which he began to do. But for whatever reason he failed and the rabbit just fell unconscious. Teltu's jaw dropped and the hero asked if she was alright. Just as she thought, her husband is indeed unusual. When they got back to the tent, Luna and Rina were already waiting for them. The hero asked how their hunt went, and Luna happily said it went really well. Elga was also there and said hello to the hero. He said he would butcher the game he had brought, and Arata thanked him for his help. Teltu hid behind Arata, she remembered that Elga had called her a wussy dragon. The hero remembered that Teltu only talks to him and Rina normally, but not so much to Luna and Elga. Before this, she was busy offering and cooking the imperial boar. Because of that, her adrenaline was at an all-time high. But now that it's over, her adrenaline has slowed down and she's having a hard time getting close to other people. She had said earlier that she had a hard time making friends because she was an ancient dragon. And in that case, Arata wanted to help her. Luna asked Arata how much they were able to get. The guy thought about that it was a great opportunity because Luna could talk to anyone. The hero turned to Teltu and asked her what they hunted. The girl blushed and was shy. She briefly said that they had managed to catch three rabbits, and Luna was thrilled. She tugged on Thelta's hand and pulled her close. She was all glowing with curiosity and asked her to tell her how they did it. After all, rabbits are quite strong and run fast, so they are very hard to catch. Teltu wanted to ask Arata for help, but he only waved at her. He asked Teltu to try her best. And if she managed to be sociable, she wouldn't be seen as a dragon weakling. Luna latched onto Teltu and asked her to teach her how to hunt rabbits. Teltu was shy and nervously grabbed at her dress. She shouted to Luna that in that case they would start her hunting training right away. Luna was surprised at this reaction and the girls smiled at each other. The hero looked at them and mentally praised Thelta. Luna called Arata over and said that she and Teltu would go play until dinner was ready, and he let them go. Holding hands like best friends, they ran towards the forest. It's been a month since the protagonist arrived on the island. Looking at the map, he assumed that they could not go to the south of the island. Elga confirmed his words and said that the younger members of the demon and dragon tribe like to go on rampages. He was confident that Arata would be fine, but he was worried about Rianne, calling her milady. The hero asked Elg about the territory where the elves live. Elga told them that elves like to isolate themselves from others. Not that they would directly attack them, but he wasn't sure how they would react to them when they saw a human. Luna replied that the spirits live there as well, and so she thought it would be fine as long as they were careful. Arata thought for a moment, for as he understood from the stories, each tribe had its own hierarchy. For example, in the Elga Beast tribe village, the ordinary beastmen who are not divine beastmen lived normally. 
those who run the Elven Beast Village are the Supreme Elves. And those who control the spirits, the Great Spirits, obviously, they are treated as gods. So shouldn't the first village he visits be the village of the Beast Tribe? Elga offered to tell Arata all about it. He gave him one piece of advice, they should bring a souvenir, such as the meat of an imperial boar, and they would definitely be welcomed with open arms. The hero asked Elga if there was any way to get off the island itself, but Elga said there was no such possibility. There is an extremely powerful barrier around the island. It was impossible to leave the island, but to enter it is easy, but if you are a mage with better skills. According to the elder of his village, it was created by a god to prevent the strongest monsters from getting out. It seems like all the living creatures that could visit the chaos in the outside world were mostly here. The island once you get on it, you can't get out anymore is the island of the gods of Arcadia. The only reason people outside of this island can live in peace is because of this island. Arata agreed, but Rihanna had nothing to do with it. From the moment he reincarnated, he wanted to explore this island, but it wasn't suitable for Rihanna. Ever since he got to the island, Rihanna took care of him a lot, and so Arata wanted to help her in her quest to get off this island. After banging his fist on the table, he decided that he would live peacefully on this island and enjoy his life as long as he was alive. And he decided to make sure that Rihanna would return home safely. He looked up at the sky and said that he would work hard and work hard to accomplish these two goals. It was already night outside. They sat with Rihanna in the tent at the table and drank tea. Arata had told her that the first thing they would do was to visit the Beastmen and get permission to stay here. Rina wondered if they needed a permit to stay here. The boy had told her that this was the Beastmen's territory. They were already using it without asking permission, so he thought they should get permission. And since they lived here anyway, it would be better if they lived with everyone's approval. The girl grinned and said he was probably the only one who could think of such a thing. Arata decided that she was right. Since they were near them, they could visit them anyway. Rina said that if Arata would go, she would go too. In that case, when they had laid out all the plans, Arata asked who would go first to the bath. Rina asked first and said that she had worked hard and was sweating. The hero didn't mind. There were no bandits on this island, but there were a few pesky monsters, so he should be on guard. Rina could probably defeat most of the monsters until something like an imperial boar appeared. But still, Arata decided that he had to be careful. Since this body was created by the gods, he could hear any monster that was approaching just by concentrating and listening carefully. He heard something and quickly got to his feet. Arata didn't realize what it was, but he felt something from the sky that he had never felt before. And it was coming towards them. He looked at the dark little dot that appeared in the sky against the moon. The shape was apparently human. The human silhouette told Arata that they were the strangers who had recently entered the island. The figure had long hair that swept in the wind. The girl with long hair and elf ears said that she smelled a delicious odor and flew here. The boy noticed that she was looking down at him, wondering who she was. Arata noticed that the girl's eyes resembled a predator's. He figured she was a bit like Elga and the Letta, and was at the top of the food chain. The girl descended from the sky to the boy, and stood in front of him and offered to introduce herself. Her name was Wilhelmina Yuarmian Wohan, and she had lived on this island for a very long time, being a vampire. Arata gave his name as well, and said that somehow he had gotten to this island, but he didn't know how. The girl smiled. Will told Arata that something interesting was about to happen on this boring island. She looked at the house, and asked permission to taste a delicacy that was delicious to her. The girl magically created a large shard of crystal, which headed towards the house and flew towards the door. The hero didn't understand what the hell was going on. Barely touching the doors, the guy shattered the flying shard and the vampire was surprised. He shouted at her, asking what the hell she was doing. Calling the guy a bastard, she asked him what his speed was. She released her attack first, so why the hell did he catch up to her? But the guy was confident in his abilities and told her so. The vampire was upset because she didn't think the guy would be that strong. But thinking about it, a smile appeared on her face, and she threw her hand up in the air. She summoned a multitude of crystals that headed at full speed straight for Arata. Even if he was damn fast, she wanted to see how the hero would handle it. Shattering the crystals, Arata cursed. Even though his body was insane, 
but this was too much. Shattering each crystal, he turned around in horror at the one he missed. One crystal was enough to destroy the entire house. The boy rushed towards the wreckage, shouting to Rianne, was she all right? But a voice from the smoke told him to stay back. Rina was naked, covered only by a single towel. She looked at Arata, blushing, and asked him not to look at her. The hero apologized, but remembered about the vampire and tensed up again, because he couldn't be distracted. The vampire could attack at any moment. Will shouted that it was great. Calling the heroes jerks, she asked them to keep arguing. She exclaimed that this shame was really delicious. Scolding, Rina asked her who she was. Arata, pointing at the vampire, assumed that she was the ultimate vampire. Will shouted to them that they could be ashamed again. After all, it tastes great and is a great starter dish. The hero told her that in all honesty, he didn't understand what was going on here or what she meant. Will answered the guy that while normal vampires drink blood, for the higher vampires, drinking blood was a sign of weakness. So instead of blood, they preferred to feed on emotions. But Arata seems to have misunderstood her again. She said she feeds on other people's emotions, that's what she meant. In short, she enjoyed the shame Rihanna was feeling. She thanked them for the delicious love comedy, and Arata didn't understand what comedy she was talking about. Now that he thought about the attacks, he realized that she was too weak to inflict even a scratch on him. And it was aimed at Rihanna, but the vampire could have launched an attack with more power. But she sent a weak attack that was aimed at the bathroom which primarily meant that this vampire had no intention of harming them. She flew up to Arata and said that the young man's taste of shame was great. Popping her head up, she smiled and said that she really loved the feeling. She wanted to continue, but Rina replied that there was no way she would dare. The girl was angry and standing in a single towel directed magic at the vampire. She yelled to Will that there was no way she would forgive her for this. She pointed the wind blades at the vampire and Will smelled anger this time with a dash of shame. The blades chopped the vampire apart, but she loved what Rina was doing to her. Rina looked at Will in shock and assumed she couldn't be defeated that easily. The severed body turned into a bunch of bats that flew around and took on the original human shape. The heroes were shocked at how this was possible. An entire vampire was standing in front of them again and smilingly looking down on them. She walked down to Rina and Arata and asked if the latter had thought that such a thing could kill her. But with a wink, she told her that the sensation was the perfect dessert. This time she got a good meal from a random stranger and told her she had to go. Will told the young lady that she had fun and asked her to be more bashful next time. It was her favorite flavor after all. With those words, she started to walk away. The heroes just stared at her in silence. Arata didn't realize if she really needed to say that. Rina was seething with anger and asked who did she think she was. Exhaling heavily, the guy said the vampire's name and said that it seemed like it would be a long time before he could live a peaceful life. A few days after Wilhena's attack, the protagonist, along with Luna and Rianne, reached the village of divine beasts. Arata had imagined it to be a more fantastical landscape, but it turned out to be a very ordinary village. Elga spotted Arata and said hello to him. There was a girl with him who greeted the guests the same way. Rina asked him, who was that girl next to him? He introduced his wife to his friends. Arata and Rina opened their mouths. The girl introduced herself with the name Livia and said she was Elga's wife. She was pleased to meet everyone. Arata introduced himself and also introduced Rina. Because of Arata's words that Elga turned out to be a married man, the beastman was a little embarrassed. Luna was telling Livia about the heroes. Elga usually took care of Livia, but then he started sneaking out of the house. So she thought he was cheating on her. Livia laughed. She was glad she was wrong, for then she would have had to drown her husband in the ocean. Elga said angrily that he couldn't be killed that easily. Elga asked his wife if they should show the village first. Rihanna and Arata smiled, calling them a sweet couple. Elga asked to follow him. As they walked through the village, they met other villagers and Arata noticed that they didn't have the strength that Elga had. Elga told the hero that this was the case. They were divine beasts, inherited the power of great ancestors who lived long ago, and were very proud of it. The residents were just ordinary beastmen who no longer had that power. Arata realized that there were different strengths here. 
but Elga would say it differently. Beastmen live in this village, and further up on the hilltop, divine beasts lived here. Rina noticed that they were like nobles to them. Not that they asked to worship them, but the beastmen themselves called Elga and the likes of him gods. They hunt in the forest for meat, while the beastmen grow vegetables and rice. They just have different roles. Luna said that everyone is busy doing their own thing, and everyone is working. The hero understood them perfectly. Since the beastmen have no power, the only way to survive is to hide under the wing of the divine beasts. It's dangerous to live on such an island, and that's what anyone would do. Elna said that they had come, and Arata was greatly surprised. It was a large house, looking more like a palace. He asked Elga if this was his house. The guy pointed at the building, and Elga said that it was an elder's mansion. They are divine beasts, and were born with the strength of the divine beasts of the past. And the elder still had those times. Luna smiled, and said that their grandmother was strong, and they wouldn't be able to overpower her, even if all the divine beasts gathered together. Elga said that the elder had asked to bring the heroes to the mansion, and asked them to follow him. After climbing the stairs and walking a bit behind the house, Elga saw the elder, and said that they had come. The elder who was smoking a pipe said hello to him. Their grandmother looked very young, more like an ordinary girl with long hair. She smiled and asked the heroes if they were the same strangers Elga had told them about. She noticed that the friends were quite amusing. Rihanna and Arata looked at her in surprise. She did look strong. Sucking in her pipe again, the elder assumed they already knew about her, but it would be rude not to introduce herself. Her name is Phoenix, and she is the one who unites the Divine Beast Tribe. The leader of the Divine Beast Tribe is Phoenix. Arata and Rihanna introduced themselves. Rihanna thanked for the hospitality. Phoenix didn't like unnecessary formality and asked them to relax in this case. She used to be called the Divine Bird and other many names. But when she is in this form, she is usually addressed as Suzaku and allowed the heroes to call her the same. She was annoyed by the elder's nickname and felt as if she was an old woman. Elga indignantly said that an elder is an elder. And she was one before he was born, so no objections are accepted. Phoenix told Elga that he hadn't been able to watch his tongue since he was a child, and she wondered what he was like. Elga was sure he was just like her, since she raised him. Arata thought about the fact that they looked like different races, and most likely it wasn't blood-related. But it felt like they trusted each other. The Elder hoped they would all continue to be friends. After all, Elga was a good guy, after all. She also told the heroes that she had heard a lot about them from Luna. And if she liked them, they probably weren't bad guys. So Phoenix said they would welcome them today. She raised her index finger and a light appeared on the tip of it. She pointed them to Arata and threw a small ball of fire at him. No one expected this and everyone froze in surprise. The small fireball burst into a large flame after touching Arata's hand. He looked in surprise at his hand that was on fire. Phoenix laughed and praised him. Rina couldn't believe it and Arata asked what happened. She told him that the magic in that fire was several times more than her mana reserve she guessed even dozens of times. And after all, she had let it out so carelessly. But what was especially astonishing was that Arata calmly accepted it. Arata smiled with the fire in his hand and said that he didn't know about how amazing this fire was. Rina covered her face with her hand and said that it wasn't a toy for him. Arata thought the fire was dangerous and put it out. Elda asked the elder how she treated the guests. Phoenix stood in front of Arata and said she liked him and that she hadn't warmed up in a while. Arata nervously swallowed the lump in his throat. Grinning, she said that she had a bunch of rowdy guys here, deciding to leave them alone for a while. As she left, she waved at them and asked Elga to show them around the village and have a party in the evening. Elga apologized for Phoenix, but the hero said he was used to this sort of thing lately. After leaving the house, they headed onward. Evening came, and the heroes familiarized themselves with the entire village. Phoenix raised her mug and shouted to everyone that Elga, a warrior of the Divine Beast tribe, had brought new friends today. She told them that one of them was a monster who had taken her fire and asked them to drink to them. Arata and Rina felt kind of awkward. Luna brought the dish over to Rihanna and asked her to look at what she brought. Rihanna thanked her. Arata was worried that Rihanna might get sick, 
but it seems Elga asked the divine beasts to suppress their magic. After tasting the dish, Arata himself was shocked at how delicious it was. Everyone had a feast. Imperial boar meat cutlet sandwiches. Rina had prepared them as a gift. The elder looked at them and thought it was delicious. The girl asked her to try it. Emperor boars rarely come out, so Suzaku hadn't eaten them in a long time. Taking a bite of a piece, she came to her delight. She shouted that it was very good. She asked if this is definitely it. It tasted even better than the emperor boar meat she had tasted. Hugging Rianne, she said that she had heard that she was a good cook. But to be this good? While everyone was sitting and feasting, Arata noticed that it was getting noisy off to the side. Not far from where they were feasting, there was an explosion that made a couple people just fly off in the air. It was as if Arata and Rianne were not surprised by their flight. The elder waved her hand and said that the youth had gotten a little rowdy and told them not to worry about it. The hero thought that this was not the case. They were just around the corner. Suzaku said it was Gaius, the fiercest of the divine beast tribe whose ancestor was the divine beast hippopotamus. He shouted loudly about who made that thing. Rina saw a huge monster in front of her, who took the sandwich in his hands and nervously asked her if she made it. Arata saw the sandwich and realized what he meant. Rina said quietly in fear that she made them. The huge beast pointed a finger at her. Suddenly he said that she would be his bride. Rina was shocked and she re-examined what he said. He repeated himself and said that she would be his bride. Arata decided to react to the situation. Rina was pleased with Arata who had his back to her. The beast shouted and asked the guy what he wanted and the guy told him that he suddenly comes and says such a thing, saying that no one would like such a thing. Gaius showed the sandwich and asked again if she made it. Turning to Rianne, he shouted at her about becoming his wife and making them for him for the rest of his life. Luna became concerned about Reina's condition and the hero noticed that she was getting sick. The girl covered her mouth with her hand. The other divine beasts suppressed their magic for Rianne's sake, but this one, on the contrary, emits it trying to intimidate and subdue. It's as if he thinks he's above them and doesn't really care about Rianne. Arata got angry. Crunching his arms, the beast demanded not to stand in his way, threatening to throw the hero out of here. Taking off his jacket, Arata offered him a shot. The rivals looked menacingly at each other. Suddenly, flames flew between them. Suzaku remarked that dueling over the girl was a good idea, but she couldn't let him kick out a guest. That's not hospitable at all. Gaius shouted to the elder not to interfere. Suzaku became angry and threateningly told him that he was the only one here who was interfering with the fun. She could understand his feelings though. The hero thought it was better not to understand them. In that case, the elder raised her hand up, from which a huge flame appeared. She shouted that they would decide everything in the duel of divine beasts. Arata opened his mouth to look at Suzaku. Rina asked Luna, what is this? Elga just held his head. Arata asked him to explain, and Elga told him that they respected their ancestors. So when they could not divide something, they made an oath and then proudly began to fight. The loser yields to the winner. In other words, Rina would be their bet. Suzaku sternly asked the people if anyone had any objections. Elga snapped back, noting, I wish they did. He wanted to tell her that they were their guests after all. But Suzaku asked him not to be mean. Rina looked at Arata worriedly. Arata asked her to let him handle it, and the girl smilingly said she relied on him. The beastman parted and created a dueling circle with Arata and Gaius in it. The beastman told him that he would take Rina, but Arata thought about not giving her to such a guy. If Gaius won, Rina would become his wife. If Arata wins, the elder said that she would do anything he asked, but within reasonable limits of course. Arata asked her if this was true, and she assured him that it was the word of the divine beast. From what he understood, Suzaku had lived here since time immemorial, and maybe she knew how to get off the island. Looking at Rianne, Arata thought of the best way to repay Rianne for her help, and that is to bring her back home. So he's bound to win. The great warrior Gaius, descendant of the divine beast Hippopotamus, and Arata the human, in order not to tarnish their pride. Suzaku urged them to fight with all their might and announced the start of the battle. The duel began and both enemies went on the attack. They clung to each other with their bare hands. Rina and Luna were worried about Eret. 
The tense hero thought about Gaius being stronger than even Teltu. But he thought it was alright, and held back his onslaught. Gaius couldn't believe that the guy stopped his attack, and attacked back. The elder was delighted, and said that Arata had once again exceeded her expectations. Arata started to move the antagonist backwards, and all the beasts were amazed at how he was doing it. They shouted that the guy was something, assuming that he had practiced a lot for such an occasion. But that wasn't true, for this body was a gift from a god, and Arata had never practiced sumo. But he firmly knew he had to win. After all, he couldn't forgive this guy who had scared Rhianus so much. And so, he just had to win. With these thoughts, he went on the offensive. He shouted that it was time to end this, and pounced on the beast. Dust rose up, from behind which people could not see anything. Rhianne, Elga, and the Elder watched carefully. Gaius kneeled down, and the guy shouted that he had won. Suzaku shouted that the match was over. She proclaimed Arata the winner, and everyone shouted congratulations to him. Gaius couldn't believe that he had lost, and Arata turned to Rihanna without saying anything to him. Rihanna had already prepared a towel for him, and the hero told her that he had returned with victory. She was glad that he was alright. Arata smiled. He knew she was worried. Luna hugged Arata, and admiring him shouted that he was strong. Elga smiled, and told Arata that he doesn't take the easy way out. Gaius isn't particularly smart, and in terms of brute force, he's number one here. But the hero just took the straight path. Arata didn't understand what Elga was talking about. They looked at the battlefield and looked at the tracks after the battle, where there was only one straight lane in Arata's favor. It was as if there wasn't a big gap in strength between them, and to pull something like that off, only a damn good fighter could. From behind, Gaius approached Arata. The hero was wary and thought about fighting again, not wanting to give up on Rhianne. Gaius looked at him and held out his hand to him, but unexpectedly, Gaius reached out his hand to shake theirs. He offered the hero to be his friend. His eyes sparkled and he told Arata that he respected him. Clearly not expecting this, the boy hesitantly shook his hand and agreed. Gaius said that from now on they would be friends, and if anything happens, he asked the hero to contact him. Before Arata could thank him, Gaius asked him for a duel again. And this time, he shouted that he would not lose. All the beasts became animated. They too wanted to fight Arata. They shouted that they would show him their techniques to see whose flesh was stronger. And for some, strength was more important in a fight. Arata asked them all to at least take turns. After scattering all the opponents around the field, he noticed that it was already morning. He exhaled and said that he was tired. Rihanna and Luna were sitting nearby and were already asleep. Elga and his wife were also sitting nearby dozing. The elder was sleeping in her bed at home in general. Arata was shocked. They had just come to say hello, but he didn't think it would end up like this. Humbled, he decided to sit down and rest. At least he was having fun. Thinking about it, the guy watched the sunrise. The next day, he and Rina returned from the Divine Beast Village. The boy was resting on a hammock. As they passed by, Rina noticed that Arata was sleeping soundly and sweetly. Yesterday had been a hard day for him, and even he was tired after all that. She smiled and walked over to him. Stroking his hair, Rina quietly said that he looked cool last night. The boy opened his eyes and Rina told him that if he slept now, he wouldn't sleep at night. Arata decided that he did get carried away, Standing up, he slowly and sleepily stretched. The girl asked if he was all right, assuming he was tired. Arata said he was just feeling good, so he didn't notice falling asleep. He said he hadn't rested like that in a long time. In his previous life, he was always busy with work. Even when he came home, he couldn't get the thought of tomorrow out of his mind. Rina smiled and noticed that he looked relaxed. Smiling, the guy couldn't be happy that he had come to this island. Rina was glad that he felt that way. Arata thought about the fact that he wanted to live alone at first, but now he wanted to learn more about this island and the species that inhabit it. After all, it would be even more fun this way, he decided. He didn't think about the fact that living alone was the quiet life he wanted, and continuing to socialize and have fun with his neighbors was what he wanted. Arata wished there were more days like this. And of course, he would do anything to help Rina telling her that he would try his best to make sure she came home. Rina asked what this was all for. The hero was taken aback, 
since the accident had brought her here. Wouldn't she want to go back home? Rena smiled and didn't know what to answer. After all, the two of them hadn't discussed this yet. Rena remembered him telling her that he wanted to live on this island, so she thought she would help him. Arata thought it was true. He didn't recall the girl talking about going home, and she never once tried to find a way to get out of here. So he was worrying about it alone. Sadly, he headed into the woods and said he'd bury himself, and Rena asked him to stop. It was late evening and Rena and Arata sat down at the table to have tea. He said that he had misunderstood her and suggested that Rena discuss what they would do next. For one thing, she wondered why he thought she wanted to go back. But after all, she had sailed here on a royal mission and had been shipwrecked. So Onai thought about the fact that she would want to go back. Rena admitted that this was the case. And come to think of it, she didn't tell him about the circumstances surrounding it. Arata realized that something bad had happened before she was here. The girl said she was an orphan. Until her first teacher, the first archmage among the seven stars picked her up making her his apprentice. It was very hard from there. She was abandoned in a wilderness that was inhabited by dangerous monsters. To survive in this place, she had to use magic until she passed out from exhaustion. And the thought of those hellish days made her sick. That's how she became one of the seven archmages. Arata noticed that after what she had said, the girl had become very low. He asked her what was wrong, and she replied that she had not told him the most important thing. After all, she had come here by order of the king, in search of the elixir of immortality. But she was driven into a trap. Soon after she had attained the rank of archmage, the duke of their kingdom asked her to become his court sorceress. However, one of the strongest mages on the continent could not serve a nobleman, so she refused. But as it turned out, the duke didn't see her as a sorceress. He wanted to make her his woman. After refusing, the duke began to persecute her using all his power the native kingdom started to give her a hard time. They even wanted to touch the orphanage where she lived. Thus, a situation was created where she could not refuse. So she escaped, taking advantage of the earlier royal decree to get the elixir of immortality, which was supposed to be on this island. Arata understood everything. After the shipwreck, they should decide she was dead and finally get behind the orphanage. However, she was tired of it all. The hero looked sadly at Rene. From an early age, she devoted all her time to practicing magic. Until one day, she entered the ranks of the strongest magicians. But despite her success, she was not seen as anything but a woman, and that was most likely hard to accept. Plus, no one on the island knows how hard it is to achieve such a rank. There is no one to reward her for all the hard work she has done. Arata sadly told her that she had traveled such a long way to become an archmage, but it didn't matter here. The girl smiled tiredly and said that she never really wanted to become a wizard. She remembered the sisters from the orphanage who were so kind and she wished she could be one of them. But her teacher said that if she was a sorceress, she would do more good for the orphanage. So she tried so hard and the hero understood her. He assumed that in that case, she wouldn't want to go back to the continent and would rather stay here. Rina agreed with his assumption. She said he shouldn't worry, Luna and Teltu are nice, and she befriended Elga and the others. So instead of going back home, she would like to live her second life here. Arata smiled. Holding out his hand to her, he said that in that case, they would live the same life. Agreeing with the hero, Rina shook his hand. There was no hidden meaning to it. A simple handshake to confirm that they would remain equal friends. But Arata thought it was very important, and was sure they both thought so. A few days passed. In the morning, the hero wanted to go for a walk and asked Rihanna if she wanted to walk with him. But the girl took out a book and said that she wanted to read a magic folio. Arata recognized the book that Will had brought as an apology for laughing at them and breaking the bathhouse. Rihanna was not very pleased, for she saw no sign of remorse in her. She only grinned at Rihanna and said it was no great loss. But it was so easy to give up something precious, no matter what one said and she was an extraordinary creature. Arata wondered what was in that book. Rina said that there was magic in it, which was considered a myth. Still, she was curious because she was an archmage. Arata thought about how she didn't want to be an archmage, and the girl said it was different. Arata smiled and said that if this book would help protect Rina, he would go for a walk. The girl wished him a beautiful day, 
As he left the tent, he said that it was a beautiful day. He heard some sounds from the forest and noticed that the ground was shaking. Someone was running here from the strongest creatures. A human figure stood in front of him. It was Elga. He was concerned and asked if they had seen the moon. Arata replied that she had dined with them yesterday and went home as usual. He asked Elga what happened. He said that Luna hadn't been home since yesterday and he didn't know where she had gone. Arata thought about how even the strongest beings could find themselves in a predicament. Rena came out of the tent at the sound, and when she saw Elga, she asked him what was wrong. Arata told her that Luna had not returned home yesterday, which alarmed the girl. Rena said that in that case, they should get busy looking for her, but Elga said it was their problem. He asked his friends to tell her to go back home in case she came. Before Arata could say anything to him, Elga had already run off. Rina hesitated and the hero asked what they should do now. Rina suggested that they should still go look for her. Luna, though a child, is a divine beast. It was unlikely that there would be a monster that could harm her. They wondered what had happened and Arata agreed to go looking for her. He asked Rina to wait for him here while he went to look for Luna and Rina agreed, wishing him luck. Arata ran towards the forest with wild speed. Running into the deepest part of the forest, he didn't stop, seeing no sign of Luna. Since she didn't come back for so long, there must have been some problem. Or is Luna herself unwilling to come back? But yesterday she seemed happy, even more cheerful than usual. Arata couldn't believe such thoughts. Yesterday at dinner, she talked about Elga and Livia's wedding anniversary, and said that they decided to have a party for the three of them. Arata noticed that she was looking forward to it. Luna said she wanted to prepare a present for them, so she left early. He speculated that something might have happened while she was preparing the gift. Stopping, he listened and felt Luna's presence. It didn't seem like she was weakened and the boy exhaled quietly. But why didn't she want to come back? By a tall, thick tree, Arata saw Luna sitting with her back to him. He approached her and asked her what she was doing here. Luna looked as if she had her back to someone and became nervous. Arata looked behind Luna's back. Luna was trying to cover two small puppies who were sleeping. Arata asked who it was, and Luna looked away and said sadly that today was Elga and Livia's anniversary. She wanted to give them something, and Livia said she wanted to have a baby. Arata realized that Luna wanted to give them wolves. He asked Luna where their parents were, but the girl sadly lowered her gaze. Arata assumed that the wolves had parents, but the girl was sure they didn't. By the time she got here, it was too late. She nervously clutched the piece of cloth on her clothes. Arata asked her to calm down, since no one blamed her for anything, and tell her what had happened. After saying goodbye to Arata and Rina yesterday, she went looking for a wedding anniversary present. And so she found the wolf cubs, but it turned out that their mother had been attacked by another monster. Luna chased him away and saved the cubs, but their mother was mortally wounded and soon died. Luna thought that if she did nothing, they would be attacked by other monsters. At first she wanted to take them with her, but they didn't want to leave. She told them that their mother had died, but they didn't realize it. Then Luna buried their mother and tried again to take them home, but they still didn't want to leave. Then she was afraid they would die, and all this time Luna protected them. Arata patted her on the head and said she did a great job. He asked Luna what she would do now. She said she would try to explain things to them again as they woke up. The hero wasn't sure if they understood her, and Luna didn't know that either. Arata asked what those monsters were, and Luna told him they were blood wolves. They become very strong when they grow up. Arata thought about what Luna said, for even by her standards they would be strong. One day the cubs would be dangerous, they wouldn't hurt him, but Rihanna could. Of course Luna wouldn't like that, but the guy thought about getting rid of them. But then Arata and Luna looked at them. The puppies woke up and stretched cutely from their sound sleep. Luna happily said they were awake, but Arata wasn't too happy with them. One of the puppies turned his attention to Arata. The two wolves ran somewhere and Arata asked Luna what was wrong. They were sniffing out the place where their mother was buried and the hero's heart squeezed. He realized that these cubs wouldn't see their mother again, but they didn't seem to understand that. The monsters could also feel the pain of loss. Kneeling down in front of Luna, Arata clarified to her if she could definitely tame them. Luna lowered her ears and sadly agreed. 
In that case, Arata offered to let them say goodbye to their mother and take them home. Luna smiled and agreed. From behind, Arata was called by Elga. He was glad that the boy had found Luna. The hero apologized for not calling him, but the guy wasn't bothered by it. Besides, he had already realized that Arata couldn't leave Luna sleeping peacefully with the wolves. Elga smiled, and sitting down next to him asked him to tell him everything later. Sitting down next to him, he asked Arata if Luna had caused trouble. But the guy didn't think that Luna had caused trouble. Looking at the sleeping girl, the guys smiled. Apparently she hadn't slept at all last night, and Arata wished he could let her sleep. But he was also thinking that they shouldn't have lingered. Elga had told the hero that there was nothing wrong with that. Livia wasn't angry with Luna, instead she was angry with Elga. Arata thought it was funny, but Elga didn't understand why he was laughing. He just thought about Elga being a nice guy, but Elga wasn't happy to hear a compliment from a guy, so he was embarrassed. Though he thought about the fact that if a girl did it, there would be a disaster. Arata realized that Elga's wife was jealous, and he asked him to shut up. Elga smiled, and looking at Luna said that she was sleepy. Sleepy Moon stretched out her arms to him, and Elga scratched the back of his head and said there was nothing he could do about it. Taking the sleeping Luna on his back again, he suggested to Arata to go back as it was going to be dark soon. A week later, Luna returned with the wolves. They were given the names Kalulu and Golulu, for they sounded the same when they howled. The puppies were happy and grew up with a family. The heroes also began to work more with the Beastmen settlement. They started trading with the locals and also started living a more civilized life. Arata enthusiastically told Rihanna that they were going to build a house here. Rihanna didn't understand what he meant. Arata was thinking about the fact that Rihanna was a girl after all, and he was a guy. He didn't think about the fact that Rihanna would want to live in the same tent with him all the time. Without thinking, Rihanna told him that they had lived together for so long that she was used to it. Her words made her blush. Trying to justify herself, she nervously said that she had only just realized he was a guy, and she felt bad for not thinking of it sooner. She agreed to build a house where everyone would have their own room. But the hero was thinking of building two different separate separate houses. Now that they had decided they were going to share a house, they needed to find materials. Arata seemed upset with her conclusion. The next day, Luna and Teltu stopped by to see them. Luna was happy and couldn't wait to see the house in its finished form. Teltu didn't like it, and she mentioned about her husband wanting to build a house so that she and Rihanna could live there together. She shouted about how they would want rooms in that house too in that case, but Arata only exhaled. Teltu became angry, not accepting such an answer. The fact that she and Rihanna are trying to build a house for the two of them. Pointing her finger at the hero, Teltu asked if he realized the fact that he was cheating on her. It's so unfair to her, isn't it? Hugging the guy, she talked about how she would like to live with him too. Rihanna said that in that case, it could be done. They were told they could build what they wanted, that way they could build a bigger house. Luna shouted that in that case, she needed a room too. Teltu asked for high ceilings in her room, and Luna asked for a fluffy futon. Rihanna and Arata smiled. Agreeing, Arata said it was time for hard work. And so a week passed. The big two-story house was ready. It was done much faster than Arata expected. He thought it would take a couple months. Rihanna noticed that it was easy to build a house using magic. And since Arata was here, they were able to finish building the house faster. But Arata wasn't sure if he was that useful. Although he did all the work that required lifting heavy weights. Rihanna leaned against the wall and said that Arata's mud magic helped them in building a strong wall. This wall is so strong that even if someone wanted to destroy it, they would not be able to do so. But they also needed protection around the house, especially after that incident with Will when their cabin was destroyed. Also the incident when the Imperial Boar came running to them, and Rihanna agreed. Either way, she meant a huge contribution, so she asked Arata not to be modest. She offered to deal with the rest by hanging a bell by the door. Inside the spacious house, the hero suggested to Rina where to put the dining table. Teltu said she wanted her own attic, so he allocated a small cozy area for her. Luna's room would be downstairs. To make sure she didn't destroy the room, Rina cast protective magic. In case the guests wanted to stay, Arata made two more guest rooms. Also Arata's room, 
and Rianne's room next to it. Rianne noticed that night was near and suggested that they sleep in the tent tonight and finish preparing the house the next day. It was their last night in that tent. Arata thought back to the first few nights in the tent with Rihanna when he couldn't sleep. Even though they were moving to a new house, for some reason he felt lonely. He looked at Rihanna, who had picked up a book, and told him that she would miss the days spent in this tent. Arata was surprised, and smiling agreed that it was great. Just because they move from the tent to the house, their relationship won't change. They are close friends, but they live as one family. Arata got to his feet, and with a smile suggested that they sleep together again. Rihanna was surprised and blushed. Keeping silent, she only smiled. That's how the night passed. They had done an amazing job with this house. Someone knocked, and Arata opened the door. Teltu jumped on him, and told him that his wife had come. Elga and Luna also congratulated him on his housewarming. The boy smiled at them, and motioned for them to come in. But then he saw an elder in the courtyard, who appraised their house. Suzuki said hello. The hero asked how she was doing, and she said she just wanted to take a walk. She also stopped by to give them a gift, and laughing offered to cry in gratitude. Arata didn't understand what she meant. Suzuki reminded him that he had won the fight with Guy, which meant she had to give him what he wanted. Arata smiled, and said he was more worried about Rihanna's safety, so he forgot about the promise. The almighty Suzuku wanted to offer it to him, but she saw that it didn't bother him much. Suzuki's fiery wings appeared behind her, and she told them that she would choose the best gift for them that she could find. As she ascended into the sky, everyone marveled at her power. A tall pillar of fire erupted, from which a fiery creature looked up at Arata. Suzuki turned into a large flaming phoenix. Rina and Arata looked at her mesmerized, for they had never seen anything like this before. A person who is stronger than anyone on this island. Upon landing, the phoenix asked them to climb on her back, offering to give them a tour of the island. Elga and Luna were shocked by her offer. Phoenix said he shouldn't take it for granted. The only reason she was doing it was because he had shown her something interesting. As they climbed on top of her, Rihanna and Arata noticed that it was getting a little hot, but it wasn't burning their feet. Their friends looked at them, and the hero turned to Suzuku. He asked her to take everyone with him, but the bird laughed. After all, these people considered her a god. The hero clarified if she would take them with her, and the phoenix agreed. She asked them to hurry up, and Elga asked if that was really okay. Suzuki was fine with it, since she promised to give Arata what he wanted. Luna was the first to jump on the phoenix, and Teltu hesitantly asked if she could have one too. When everyone climbed up, Suzuki asked them as hard as she could not to fall down. They abruptly soared upwards. Closing his eyes from the airflow, Arata asked Rihanna if Rihanna was okay. But the phoenix asked him how long he was going to close his eyes. Opening them, the guy was surprised. There was a whole continent in front of him, for at such a height everything was visible. They saw even the erupting volcano in the distance, from which there were puffs of smoke, and the terrible rocks that surrounded it. Rihanna and Arata exclaimed that it was simply amazing. It was the first time the hero was at such an altitude, and he noticed that the island was really big. Looking in the distance, he said that he hadn't been there yet, and that this island was really beautiful. Luna and Elga were delighted. Teltu was also catching the air currents. And Arata looked at the happy Rihanna. He was very grateful to the god for being reborn on this island. He turned to Rihanna. He was sure that many more fun days awaited them, and Rihanna agreed. He planned to live peacefully as well as cheerfully on this dangerous island. He asked God to continue to watch over him from above. Somewhere on the continent, there was a meeting of seven mages. One of the men asked if it was true that Rihanna was dead. And another man in a cloak said he was almost certain of it. A hurricane hit the ship Rihanna was on. Because the hurricane destroyed the ship, Rihanna ducked into the sea. The only reason she died was because she was the youngest of them all. After all, she was also the weakest of them all. The man asked what the kingdom planned to do. The kingdom considered them pawns, and one of the mages thought about teaching them a lesson. The other mage asked to calm down, because after all it was just Rihanna, not that big of a problem. In any case, leaving it as it is would tarnish the name of the Saya great mages. Everyone fell silent in the darkness that was only illuminated by a couple candles. The man smiled and asked the others to let them leave. 
The man in the cloak said that he would go to that island that Rihanna had never been able to reach, and he himself would get the cure that would give them eternal life. The other mage believed him, and said he would leave it up to him. Sitting at the table, the mage told him that he could no longer tarnish their name, and he couldn't trust such an idiot. In that case, he said he would go with him too. Anyway, it had been boring here lately. The man got angry and asked his comrade, who was it that was called an idiot? A human figure below his height told him to calm down, and that two are better than one. The man thought that if there were these two, he could relax. The other magician told them that he would allow it. And in that case, the two mages decided to go to an isolated island. Two weeks have passed since the heroes explored the island on Suzuki's back. As of late, Guy and his friends had started to visit them, but really they just liked Rianae's food. However, since they ate most of the food, their portion sizes had greatly decreased. Therefore, Luna and Elga constantly kicked Guy and his friends out. Rina embarrassedly said that they had no reason to fight since there was still plenty of imperial boar meat. It was like Elga and the others liked fighting. Sitting down at the table, Arata thought about the meat buns releasing an absolutely heavenly aroma. He was sure that everything would be fine if he took one. Rina grimly refused him and said it was for tomorrow, so she asked Arat to be more patient. In that case, he put the Tereska on the table for cooking. Arata noticed a small bottle in Rianae's hands, and she told him that they were the seasonings of the Beastman tribe. They were different from what they had at home, so she decided to try different seasonings. Arata said with a smile that he couldn't wait for it anymore. As a Japanese, he was very happy that there were things like soy sauce. Rina realized that in his world so were sauces and different condiments. Rina hadn't decided how to use these sauces yet, and asked him to give her a couple recipes. Arata replied that you can dip sushi in soy sauce to add flavor. With miso, you can make miso soup. Though in truth, he didn't know how to do that. Rina said that in that case, she would continue to take lessons from Livia. Arata would be happy to taste Rianae's miso soup. He continued to live peacefully on this island and eat delicious food. Tilting his head while sitting on the chair, he thought that his life was amazing. Rina asked if everyone made such food where he lived. Arata told her that some people had time to make delicious food. There were no conflicts, things like monsters didn't exist. Society was peaceful, and he thought about the fact that everyone had gotten lazier. Rina assumed it was because of the phones, something they could use in their country. The thing was that people worked all the time, and anyone could get you anywhere. Rina was even saddened, because she was even scared to think that her teacher could contact her at any moment. The thought made her shiver. Rina prepared a mountain of food for tomorrow, and wondered what they should do next now. Arata realized during their conversation that they had never once eaten fish here. Rina thought he was right, for she always went off to the forest for vegetables and hunting for meat. But she had never tried to catch a fish. Arata suggested they go fishing, but there weren't many kinds of fish in the river. Rina suggested going to the sea. Upon reaching the shore, the heroes smiled. There was a pleasant breeze, and they both looked out to sea. Rina remembered that it had been two months. She told Arata that it had been two months since they met. That was when he first met Rianae, and he had saved her. Arata thought about saving Rianae, and the fact that without her, he probably wouldn't have been able to survive. Rina noticed the look on his face and asked what happened, but Arata said it was nothing special. He talked about how since the moment they met, he could feel how much he had changed. Rina assumed he was talking about how he wanted to live alone. The boy mused and said that was partly true. Rina smiled and told him that she knew him exactly how he was now, since they had always been together since then. The hero blushed. Rina remembered that they had come for the fish and asked Arata where they should start. Arata wanted to answer, but noticed something nearby. There were people lying on the shore, they were unconscious. Arata was frightened and ran up to them and noticed that the man was not breathing. He told Rina that he would help him and asked him to help the girl. After pumping the man out, he coughed up water. Arata looked at Rina in a hurry and asked what she had. The girl used the zipper and smiling said it seemed to be working. She wanted to do it again, but Arata asked her in shock what she was doing. Rina didn't understand what he meant, after all she was saving her. But Arata didn't understand such help, looking at the unconscious girl. 
Rina answered him that in this world, it's quite normal to save someone with lightning. And she told him that it didn't hurt much, but Arata doubted. Rina continued hitting the girl with lightning, and the guy said he didn't believe her at all. Arata looked at the girl sadly and asked her to rest in peace. An enraged Rina shouted at him that she wasn't dead. Barely stirring, Rina rejoiced that she was right. But then she felt sad and would have preferred their deaths. Arata asked her if they knew each other, and Rina said they were some of the ones she didn't want to remember. The man was Zero's Granda, and the girl was Merlin Marin. They were number five and six great mages, and they are higher in rank than her. Upon arriving at the house, Arata was happy that they had guest rooms, but Rina wasn't as excited as he was. She knew she should have told about them before. These two were number five and six among mages, and they are a rank higher than her. But unlike her who had joined them recently, they had been part of the seven great mages for over 20 years, which meant they were definitely stronger than her. Arata was surprised and said that they looked young. The girl replied that strong mages could control their aging, and those two are well into their 50s. Arata thought about how magic is really amazing. Since there's a big age difference between Rihanna and the other mages, she didn't like any of them. They emphasized that many times in magic was the only thing they were interested in, so she tried her best not to mess with them. Even so, if she were stronger, she could hide from them. Arata had told her that it was no longer a big deal now. In this island, no one knows who the seven great mages are. Here she is not Rihanna, one of the seven great mages, but just Rihanna. Arata encouraged her with his words. Hearing the noise, they thought that the mages were already awake. Walking into the room, the guy asked how they were feeling. The two looked at the hero with disbelief, but he didn't blame them for being cautious. Zeros was shocked at what he saw. He opened his mouth at the sight of Rihanna, and Marlene asked the girl just as surprised that she had survived. Rihanna sullenly answered them that it had been a long time since they had seen each other. All four of them sat down at the table. Arata offered to introduce himself first, but he had already heard a bit about them from Rihanna. Marlene was fine with that, but she started by thanking them for saving her and bowing. Zeros didn't approve of this behavior at first, but after thinking for a bit, he also decided to bow and thank. The hero noticed that these two weren't as bad as Rihanna said they were. Zeros decided to start, and said that he was number six of the great mages. Death Flame, Zeros Grandar. Merlin Marin Holy Water was number five of the mages. Arata said it was a pleasure to meet him and gave his name. He said that he came to this island two months ago and had been living here ever since. He thought about the fact that there was no point in Rihanna introducing herself. Zero still couldn't believe that she was alive and Rihanna wasn't very happy with his words. Marlene asked Arata what the island was like. The boy thought that if he told them everything, they wouldn't believe him anyway. Suddenly, he felt something, and apologizing, he asked Rihanna to tell them everything. He said he had to go out for a while. All three of them looked at him puzzled. Just as Arata thought, it was Teltu. From afar, she called out to the hero. Turning from a dragon into a girl, she pounced on him, and said that she had come to visit them. Stroking Felta's head, he said she was full of energy as usual. Rejoicing for not long, Teltu felt something, and she became wary. Pointing her finger at the house, she yelled out that she felt another girl besides Luna and Rihanna, and was angry that he had brought another one into the house. He asked her to listen, and told her everything. After listening to Arata, Teltu told him that this island is under the protection of a god, and everything that comes from outside to this island stays here. For example, being on this island was already unbelievable. But even more people couldn't get it into their heads. How did God allow this? She suggested that something might have happened to the barrier of this island. Arata thought about it, for he had already had a similar conversation with Elga. Teltu asked him not to forget that they as inhabitants of the island could not leave it. They were stopped by the power of the god. Arata thought about the fact that the god who reborn him was different from the god Elga talked about. Since even the most powerful monster couldn't leave the island, the barrier must be extremely powerful. And if there was a gap in the barrier, only the god who created it could fix it. Arata asked Teltu if it would be a problem if the barrier went missing. If you think about it, there wouldn't be much of a problem since they weren't really interested in the outside world. Most on the island would rather rest than go crazy in the human world. 
most meant that there were a couple of crazies that would need to be stopped. In any case, there was no point in talking about it now. Arata motioned for her to come inside and offered to have dinner with them. Teltu threw herself at Arata and said she wanted meat. Taking the girl on his back, Arata laughed and said anything for her. Marlin and Zeros came out of the house and the hero asked if they had discussed everything. Zeros scratching the back of his head said they had talked. Looking out from the back, Teltu looked at the mages and asked Arata if he was talking about them. Seeing her, the two mages tensed up. It was as if a shiver ran through them. Zeros thought in horror at what kind of monster this was. He felt the same from her as he felt from the red hell dragon that had once destroyed their nation many years ago. He didn't understand why such a crazy monster was doing here. Marlene remarked that it was all bad, but Arata asked them to calm down and assured them that this child was not guilty of anything. Teltu looked at them sullenly and spread her dragon wings. Zeros thought about her wanting a fight, calling her a damn monster. Marlene was amazed by this power. Arata turned to Telt and asked what she was doing. The girl asked, isn't this fun? And said she should relax like this more often. The two froze in horror and Arata called out to Thelta. He told her menacingly that he hated girls who did such things. Changing abruptly, Teltu walked over to Zeros and shook his hand expressing all the joy of their acquaintance on this island. She told them that they were glad to have them visit them. Looking back at Arata, she asked if he saw that they had become friends. The two mages stood in motionless shock. Arata told the girl that they were Rianae's friends and he would be happy if she got along with them. He motioned for her to come over to him and Teltu ran up and hugged him. Zeros couldn't believe his eyes and neither could Marlene. Rina asked them from behind if they could now see what she was telling them. Rina apologized to Arata for she had told them all about this island, but they didn't believe her for some reason. Zeros shouted that it was obvious and he didn't believe that nonsense. In that case, Arata asked them what they were going to do next. Zeros lied and said they were just planning to hang around the island. Marlene said that after what they had seen, they probably wouldn't go far. Arata asked Rina what they should do. The girl sighed sadly. She thought about how Arata liked helping people too much. She told the mages that they had a tent. Even though it was small, it was all they had for now. They would share food with them, but only for a week. But then they would live on their own. The two mages bowed and expressed their gratitude. Rina said that if they died, she would feel bad that they didn't help them. She was sure that almost anyone would have done so in their place. Arata thought about how Rina was much more merciful than he was. The hero thought about the fact that they planned to live far away from them. But why did they want to stay away? Rhea assumed it was because those two thought they were stronger and wanted to stay away from someone like her. Arata said that even though they came to an isolated island, they should have been a little more open. He thought it was strange that they didn't want to work together, and Rina gave him a displeased look. She said he was the only one worried about it. Arata smiled and said that at least they had made a couple more new friends and he was looking forward to the future. Rina sighed heavily. She thought about how Arata is the only one in the entire universe who takes great mages so lightly. Arata replied that no one knows about the seven great mages on this island. She remembered his words and that she was just Rina here. Smiling, she said that he was right and asked him to forget about it. No one on this island knows about the seven great mages, and on this island, she is not part of the seven mages. The guy smiled at her in response. Teltu suggested Arata to go hunting with her, and the hero agreed. Rina asked them to bring more delicacies. She said she would cook something delicious for all of them. Arata promised that they would catch a huge boar, and Teltu asked to provide everything for them. Waving goodbye, Arata said they were off, and Rina wished them luck. As the heroes left, Rina thought about the fact that it was time to go make dinner.